Hey guys, Aaron here. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to diagnose and replace an alternator on your uh, Chevy Silverado or GMC Sierra. This uh, particular vehicle is a 2015 Silverado LT with a 5.3 liter, but if you have the uh, LTZ uh, or any truck with a 6.2 liter, these procedures are going to be the same. Now one thing to understand is that it's really important that you get the correct alternator for your truck. There's actually two different alternators that you can buy uh, for these vehicles. One of them is you know, just for the regular trucks. Another, uh, the other alternator is if you have like the SLE or Denali package with the 6.2, um, that alternator output amperage is a lot higher and actually I've seen it kind of mess things up with guys trying to swap out the higher I'll output alternator for the lower one so uh, I'll provide the OEM part numbers in the link in the description just make sure you buy the correct one um, the regular I believe is just 130 amp and the upgraded alternator for the Denali's are 150 one other thing I see is um, a lot of guys are complaining and experiencing um, the voltmeter on the dash is sweeping back and forth this is actually a normal operation um, because the ECU controls the output of the alternator um, and there's actually five different charge modes there's a you know battery sulfation mode there's a charge mode a hand lamp mode startup mode voltage reduction mode um, so one quick way to make sure if you're testing your alternator while the vehicle is running go ahead and turn on your headlights that's going to put the the ECU into headlamp mode um, which your voltage should be 13.9 through 14.5. In the description, I'll also put all these modes and the current that should be running when these modes are in effect. So once you've successfully diagnosed your alternator as being bad, first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is remove this intake. Um, what I like to do is just take a 5 16 or flathead or even an eight millimeter and remove um, the clamp here or just loosen it up, loosen it up at the throttle body. Take this little connector, pull up on it, for your PCV system. Swing it aside and do the same for this side. There's two of them. Now, as you can see with the intake off, uh, we have the, just the intake pipe. We have a lot better access to our alternator, which is located right here. Um, this cable right here is 12 volts hot at all times. So before we remove it or remove anything else, go ahead and disconnect the um, negative ground cable on your battery just to prevent any sparks or any any uh, thing touching this cable you definitely don't want this cable connecting to ground and to do just that take a 10 millimeter wrench loosen up the cable and simply lift up and shove it out of the way all right once our ground cable off our battery is disconnected take a half inch or 13 millimeter and take off this nut and simply set the cable aside. I like to, just out of caution, even though we don't have a ground, um, cover your cable back up and just set it aside like that. Next, uh, pinch the back of the connector and lift up. And then I like to just tuck that back so it's out of the way. And now we need to remove the belt um, off the snout of the alternator. We're gonna need a half inch wrench and you're gonna uh, put it right into your uh, belt tensioner, turn it to the left and when you do, you're gonna take the tension off the belt and simply just take the belt off of the uh, pulley. And the next thing is gonna be to remove the two 15 millimeter bolts. It's actually um, just a 15 millimeter socket needed to remove these bolts. Um, that's the only two bolts that hold in the alternator. Keep in mind, they are two different sizes. The one that's shorter goes closer to the throttle body. The one that's longer goes towards outside the motor. What you do is gonna be to pry the alternator out. Um, go ahead and insert a pry bar or a flat blade screwdriver and simply just pull up. And it'll come right off. Now, once you have your alternator removed, one thing to note is that these bushings, uh, there's little copper bushings that press in as the bolts tighten. It's a uh, hundred times easier to press these back. So just take a hammer 
and hit the bushings back a little bit and that'll make installing your new alternator 100 times easier. Now from there, it's pretty much reverse procedure. Uh, once you get everything back together, make sure you connect your PCV lines back to your, uh, your intake here and we're gonna start it up. Um, it's important to note that as soon as we start it, the ECU is gonna be putting the uh, alternator and charging system into charging mode for 30 seconds and then the voltage may drop because it'll be going into a different mode depending if you know your wipers are on or so so forth um, so basically we're going to be looking for anywhere around 13.5 to 14.5 volts after initial startup so there we are 14.5 uh, volts we got a good working alternator now um, I hope this video has helped you out. If it has, please like and subscribe. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave something in the comment section. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.